Thank you for joining us as we remember the birth of the Messiah. Although the Bible does record the birth of the Messiah, you may be shocked to discover that no biblical source exists for the date or observance of his birthday. Christmas, a time of rejoicing and thankfulness. Yet for some people, this season may be filled with misunderstandings and stress. For a majority of people, this time of year is about family traditions, like Santa Claus, toys, and decorating trees. For many, this holiday season is a special time to remember the greatest gift the world has ever received. And still for others, this season is a mixture of all these things, or none of them at all. In general, it is well understood that although Christmas traditions and celebrations are part of our cultural history, some of them are rooted in paganism. And almost all biblical scholars agree that the Messiah Jesus was not born on December 25th. In addition, the Bible contains no instruction to celebrate Christmas. Even though Christmas as we know it today has been usurped by the enemy, compromised by lukewarm Christians, and turned into a conglomeration of religious, secular, and pagan concepts by atheists, one thing remains biblically true, that the Savior of mankind, the promised Messiah, was born into this world. This amazing story begins in the book of Genesis. We read that God created a perfect paradise for man and woman to live in. This was a place full of peace, joy, and love. Because God desires to have a true loving relationship with us, humanity was given a free will to make their own choices. Unfortunately, they chose to disobey God and by doing so, suffered the consequences, rendering all creation cursed by sin. The human body that was once eternal now became mortal and destined for death. But God in his loving mercy has designed a way for humanity to one day return to that perfect paradise. Although the first man had failed to be perfectly obedient to God's word, the promise of a new man who would had been set in motion. Through mighty men of faith like Abraham, all the nations of the earth would be blessed by this promised Savior. The Lord gave us a sign, a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. God will be with us. The prophecy that a righteous branch, a king who will reign and prosper, executing judgment and justice in the earth, was coming to pass. The prophets foretold that out of Bethlehem shall come forth a ruler in Israel, whose coming was planned long ago, from the beginning of time. In the wilderness, a messenger prepared the way of the Lord, making a straight path for him in the desert. The time had finally come. God sent an angel to a virgin named Mary, who said to her, You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jehovah is salvation. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now it came to pass, when it was time for Mary to give birth, there were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. The prophecy that was given to Adam and Eve in that perfect paradise so many years ago was nearly complete. This child Jesus would now begin to fulfill the promise for which he was born. Though being in the form of God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, he took the humble position of a servant, and was born as a human being. 
When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. When Adam disobeyed God's instructions, sin and death entered the world. But when Jesus perfectly obeyed God's instructions, grace, love, and everlasting life were made available to the world. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a high priest and he became the source of eternal salvation for all of those who obey him. It was this perfect obedience that was required to reverse the curse of sin and death. Adam's one sin brought condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brought a right relationship with God and a new life for everyone. Regardless of how you celebrate this time of year, let us all understand that although the world is still cursed by sin and we are all bound for death, God, in His loving mercy, has provided the way, the truth, and the life, the greatest gift the world will ever receive, Jesus.